10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Stage 1 ascent burn. Lift off of the Falcon 9. GC moved to section 57, post launch pad operations to secure on net A. GC to section 57, post launch operations. For stage propulsion nominal. Vehicle is pitching downrange. First stage, PU is active. Copy that. Ending paddleboard auto. F9 power nominal. And the Falcon F9 9 telemetry has nominal. clear the launch pad at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Vandenberg Air Force Base delivering the Jason 3 spacecraft to a circular orbit about 30 Recovery platforms away. Recovery well, altitude is 6.5 kilometers. Velocity is 280 meters per second. Downrange distance 1.1 kilometers. The vehicle is just transitioning into the supersonic regime. It's going faster than the speed of sound right now, and shortly we're going to reach max Q, or the maximum aerodynamic pressure. It's one of the highest stressed states on the rocket. First stage propulsion remains nominal. This burn will last for about another minute or so. Falcon 9 power and telemetry nominal. Kada, followed by our stage separation. And that chill has started. They have begun chilling in the Merlin vacuum engine, flowing the liquid oxygen through it. And that is actually a view from the thermal imager on the left side of the stage, second stage. Vehicle is supersonic. Has reached maximum aerodynamic All pressure. right, so we had a great liftoff of Falcon 9 from Vandenberg Air Force Base. So we actually have three really rapid events coming up right now. First is the stage separation, then is the relight or the light, the first burn of the second stage of the rocket, and then right after that, the fairing deploy. These are Eagles really right rapid in sequence, so we're just going to watch and see yeah. what happens here. So while we're waiting for those to happen, let's talk a little bit about the orbital mechanics that we're going to be doing today. So for those of you that follow our launches on a regular basis, um, we la typically launch our rockets from Cape Canaveral. And like we said before, we launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base. So that was confirmation that we had a successful uh, moon engine cutoff. As you can hear, the crowd's very excited. This is a fantastic milestone. Booster has been deployed via visual confirmation of stage separation. As you can see in your screen right now, the MVAC engine has started up on the second stage and it's on its way to our parking orbit before we get to yeah. Polar. So the two views that you have on your camera there, um, the one that you see right now, or just had there, there, that's uh, our infrared camera. That'll show um, oh, shades of gray to uh, display where the thermal dispersion is across the bell of the second stage. And then the other view is a stage visual TV camera. Oh, we're actually looking at the so, fairing deploy right now. Should all right, so we're just, just waiting for fairing to deploy. All and right. we have a successful fairing deployment. That's fantastic. All right, that's great. These are all really important steps. This view that you see here, so that is second stage pulling away from planet Earth. This is one of my personal favorites that we get to see. You can see that MVAC engine bell glowing hot with the exhaust gases. It means yeah. we're headed exactly where we need to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to the orbital dynamics for today. Um, so the, the polar orbit that we're trying to achieve today is actually pretty important. So uh, normally when we launch geosynchronous or low Earth orbit missions to the International Street. Space Station, we're usually taking an orbit that's pretty close to the equator yeah, around the Earth. Let me give you an Earth. Thank you. <laughs> so typically we're going around the Earth in this direction. However, for for a science mission like Jason 3, polar orbits are really important, and that's an orbit that goes the opposite direction on the Earth, so you pass over both the North and South Poles. Yeah. This is really important for science missions. Just like Jason 3, so like we said before, it's going to be measuring global uh, sea levels, and it'll be doing this once every 10 days. So that snapshot that we get of planet Earth as it goes from North Pole to South Pole is really important and perfect for the job that Jason 3 has to do. Now to get there, there's actually two separate burns you need to do. The first burn is what we're doing right now, and then there's actually a 45-minute coast period between the first 
first burn and the second burn. That second burn will circularize the orbit to a final polar orbit and get it exactly where it needs to be for its science mission. Yeah, so we're really excited. We had some great events today. Again, the view that you're seeing on your screen right now, that is the second stage as it is taking Jason 3 to polar orbit. So in just a few minutes here, as soon as we get confirmation that the first stage is coming back towards the, towards the drone ship, we'll be uh, looking at the, f the second stage one final time and then taking a 45 minute break before the second burn and satellite deployment. Yeah, exactly. So just to recap everything that's happened, we had successful stage separation. Um, we're waiting for the, the first stage booster to come back. We're going to be testing out landing on our autonomous spaceport drone ship. Although, like John said earlier, we're experiencing some pretty heavy waves out there. <laughs> All right, so um, like we said before, we've, got, we've had a really successful launch so far today. We're actually going to be sending it back up to uh, John for a quick status update. Be sure to keep following along. So far, we are on a nominal trajectory with that second stage performance. We are about four minutes away from the second engine cutoff, where we are going to park in our orbit and then get ready to deploy the Jason 3 spacecraft 45 minutes later after we do that circularization, circularization uh, maneuver we talked about earlier. Meanwhile, the first stage has performed a successful flip, and it is on its way back to the drone ship. Uh, we'll know shortly how we're doing in, in the burns. It, the, boost back a burn uh, has con been conducted and that was successful as well. You can see the image from the drone ship. We have the uh, fire hoses there for some uh, water suppression on entry uh, as we are preparing ourselves for the touchdown in about three minutes or so. So at the moment, everything is proceeding nominally uh, on today's mission. I'm gonna keep my eye on the data here right now while you guys get the opportunity to keep watching this mission uh, carry through. So let's talk a little bit more about the systems that take the first stage back down towards the autonomous spaceport drone ship. Like John was saying, there's actually several different burns that are happening right now. There's three separate MBAC, or, uh, Merlin 9 burns that the first stage does. Yeah. So the first one we've already done, like John said, we've actually flipped the booster around and we're bringing it back into the right place, lining it up with the drone ship. That's called the boost back burn, naturally. Yeah, um, we're waiting for confirmation of the second burn, and that's what actually will slow the first stage down so that it doesn't burn up as it re-enters the atmosphere. We call this one the re-entry burn, again, for obvious reasons. Yeah. So it, when, the boost, when the booster is coming back at that point, it's coming back extremely fast, and if it's slammed in the atmosphere, it would not be good for the engines and yeah. systems. So we need to slow it down just a little bit so it's ready to enter the atmosphere yeah. uh, without damage. And then the third and final burn is what we'll be able to see. Um, okay. So uh, the cheering that you see has been confirmation of the boost back burn has begun. So it sounds like we're on our way back towards the drone ship, which is a fantastic milestone. Just got two more burns to go, and we'll yeah. be back in the drone ship. <laughs> I have to say, the energy here is palpable. Like Everybody's just <laughs> so excited to see what happens. And just to reemphasize, this, uh, this is a test that we're doing today, regardless of if we land successfully or not. We're going to get some really important data from the landing attempt today. That's the most important. Even if there's a little bit of fire, it's not a big deal. This is yeah. exactly what we try to do. We learn from everything at SpaceX, whether yeah. it's a success or a failure. So Keep in mind that nobody is actually aboard the drone ship, so and it's 200 miles away. So so everybody is perfectly safe. Now, just like the last, the last launch was a night launch, so the, uh, the landing burn was actually very visible, as you can see, coming yeah. down for the last 100 feet above the pad. This one, it's still a little foggy in the drone ship, so I'm not sure if we're going to see it exactly uh, perfectly, but you definitely will be able to see the rocket coming down yeah. towards it. And like you see on the right side of your screen there, um, that is a live shot of just read the instructions as it's waiting for Falcon to return. We're at just under 30 seconds at this moment in time. So, so the, the just read the instructions is actually the same drone ship that we've used before, yeah. just now it's on the west coast instead of the east coast. <laughs> yeah. And then the thing that we're all waiting to see is the landing legs. So these are the four landing legs that will deploy from the side of the rocket so that the engine can, or excuse me, so that the rocket can set down and um, land safely without damaging the bells. And these landing legs have a pretty big scan, uh, uh, span, so it's actually really important that it comes exactly right down where we expect it to be, which means that the drone ship also needs to be exactly where the rocket thinks it's going to be. Yeah. Um, so it has thrusters to make sure. Uh, okay. Looks like we're just about to see the first stage coming towards the drone ship uh, <laughs> on your screens on Bunsen. It's, it's so quiet here right now. Everybody's waiting in great anticipation. You can see the, uh, the extinguishing system on the drone ship right there. Hopefully in just a few seconds you'll be able to see the re-entry burn as the drone ship as the rocket approaches the drone ship. Stage one landing legs have deployed. Seek one. Landing legs have deployed. Stand. Looks like we should be seeing it soon. Landing legs have deployed. That's stage two. We've also had confirmation that we've had a successful cutoff of our second engine, so it's now entering the coast phase. Again, just waiting for Falcon 9 to set down here on our autonomous spaceport drone ship.
Looks like we might have a little bit of a problem with the video, but uh, we are waiting to hear exactly what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a reminder, this is 200 miles away. There's no Wi-Fi, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Copy. unlike the, the pad shot we had the last landing. We may need to wait just a little bit to get confirmation of whether the landing was successful or not. But like I said, just to test, the primary mission is to get the Jason 3 satellite into its polar orbit, and that's what we're really all here for. It sounds like we have we just got confirmation that the parking orbit for the Jason 3 satellite yeah. in the second stage is good, which is fantastic. That means that we're on our way to our final polar orbit insertion. Which, like we said before, that's going to be about 820 miles away from Earth. Also so, the distance from New York City to Atlanta. <laughs> so like we said earlier, we actually have a 45-minute coast period between uh, the, se the, first the second stage's first burn and second burn. Now, during this 45-minute coast period, we're not going to be here with you. We're going to be showing you a graphic that displays telemetry from the rocket so you can see exactly what the second stage is doing. And after the 45-minute window, we'll come back and guide you through the final burn and then also through the spacecraft separation. Right. So these are still really important milestones. So we do hope you stay with us um, to watch as we have the final confirmation of payload deployment. And we don't have any information right now about the drone ship and the status of the first stage, but hopefully we'll get some of that really soon. We just we lost satellite signal to the connection of the drone ship, but this is pretty normal during rough seas. The satellite link, it needs precise yeah. pointing, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. As soon as we have some information on that, we'll bring it to you, and hopefully it's a good land. Unfortunately, just